it going fam? Erica with Not Your Average EDC and today we are going to talk about primitive dog breeds, wolf-like dogs, and why they may not be for the average person. After I get the stick out of the way. <laughs> so, um, you guys know that I have a pack of dogs. I have always had dogs and right now I have uh, two like kind of primitive breeds and I wanted to just talk about why uh, it, it seems to be a little bit trendy right now to get less domesticated dogs and why it's a really bad idea for the average person. This video is inspired by a guy named Chad. His channel is awesome. It's, I, I hope I'm presenting this correctly. Uh, the tag name is First 508th Airborne. Uh, he has hundreds of thousands of subs and he is an ex-game warden. He did it for, I believe, two decades, and he's also a vet and, um, like, a veteran. And he has a, a, a rescue program, and he has a lot of really cool animals. A lot of very cool dogs and dog-like things. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, so I wanted to make a video kind of inspired by his channel because he has a lot of really cool, like, wolf hybrids, wolf dogs, primitive breeds, um, lichen shepherds, which he created, renaissance bulldogs, which he also created, and I see a lot of people in his comments saying, man, I want to get a, a Siberian Husky or a wolf hybrid or a, or a Native American Indian dog. Uh, I would love to get one someday. That's my goal. I'm going to work toward that. I, I want a, you know, a, a dingo mix, um, and it, the, the amount of people saying that is almost alarming. I think it's getting kind of trendy almost for people to see these cool, like, werewolf dogs that you see on vampire movies as pets. And people think that they can just get one, and as long as they have, like, a yard and time, they can get um, a, a very non-domesticated animal. And it's not a good idea for most people. So... Let's talk about my two dogs here. We have Kane, and he got DNA tested, and he is essentially a German Shepherd cattle dog lab mix. So his wolfiness level is only at 6%, his test said. So very domesticated. However, we do have Kovu here. And Kovu tested basically 75% wolfiness. Uh, it's That's just a term that Embark uses to describe... Oh, we gotta get Kovu in frame. That's a, that's a, a term that um, Embark uses to describe like how kind of like feral your dog is, <laughs> basically. Why isn't Kovu in the frame? There we go. We'll, we'll give him some screen time here. So, um, yeah, Kovu tested at half Siberian Husky, 25% Carolina dog, which is uh, essentially an American dingo, and 25% American Staffordshire Terrier, which uh, for the average person, they would use that as an umbrella term, pit bull. Uh, pit bull is, there is only one true pit bull, the American Pit Bull Terrier. However, there are seven or so breeds that fall under the umbrella term pit bull. So if you typed in American Staffordshire Terrier, you would see a very um, pit bull-like animal, and Kovu is 25% of that. But being half husky and 25% dingo, he is very wild. <laughs> very wild. So let's talk a little bit about my experience having... Mr. Kovu here, and why, for the average person, he's not really the most ideal dog. Sorry, I'm just trying to, I want to keep him in frame here because he's the star of the show. And I know that I said that I have two kind of primitive breeds. Kane is obviously not one of them. I have two girls at home, Zadie and Zaya, which I will try to feature in another video. And Zaya is very primitive. Um, I haven't tested her yet, but I'm going to at some point, and she is either what I believe to be a lurcher or some type of pot cake hound. Those are from the Caribbean islands and they basically are little tiny scrawny feral dogs with pointy ears that um, are completely wild. Can you chill? <laughs> so Kovu here, he is seven, almost eight years old. I've had him since he was three months old and 
I was very young when I got Kovu. That was the first mistake was I was very young and I already had two other dogs. And I was really intrigued by Kovu's picture on Pet Finder. He and the rest of his litter had been rescued from, uh, they got pulled from some area down south. And I was really intrigued by him and his siblings because they all looked like little wolves. And you know, go figure. Um, that was the cool, that was the cool thing, right? Sorry, I gotta move this bag. That was, that was the cool thing, right? To have a wolf hybrid or something that looked kind of feral. So I, I inquired about him um, because I worked with dogs and had a yard and time and stuff. I was actually approved to rescue him. And um, ironically, when I went to go grab him, the dog that I actually inquired about was not him. It was a more wolfy looking thing. And Kovu out of all of the puppies was the only one that looked a little more husky, dingo-ish. The rest of them had like a blended mask already. They were all like this smoky gray, black color. And um, they, they looked very wolfy. And, and so technically he is not the dog I inquired about. However, when I did get there, um, he ended up jumping out of the kennel and into our arms. And uh, the puppy that I was interested in did not do that. So um, it was really interesting to me how uh, they were all in a kennel together and Kovu out of all of them was actually the only one that wanted human interaction. He literally jumped out of the kennel. It was um, a higher up one. It was like a kennel stacking system and he actually jumped out when they opened the kennel thing and he jumped right out into our arms and was like, take me home, get me out of here. So, um, he is not the dog I inquired about at all. He looks more domestic, surprisingly, than the rest of his litter, but I did end up taking him because it was just an instant connection, and he was like, mama. So, um, here he is, you know, I'm young, I bring him home, uh, his ears had not been fully erect yet, and he looked way more pit bull-ish when I actually got him home. Um, I noticed that his face was a little more boxy and stuff, but he definitely was act acting like a primitive breed right from the get-go. And as he got older, it was like the true husky dingo came out of him. By six months, he was running away every chance he got. Um, he could break out of any kennel. He could unlock doors. He was extremely smart and he could scale a seven foot fence and it looked like somebody just like clicked a button and he like levitated over. Uh, and he just wouldn't stick around. Um, very much a roaming dog. And obedience, not really there. <laughs> so, um, you know, moving forward with him and as he got older, it was just very clear that he was a wild boy. He would escape the house and go down to the neighbor's house and have pancakes with them in the morning and they would take him into the house and feed him pancakes because they thought he was like some type of wild feral dog. <laughs> um, and yeah, he just, he is a little wild man. He can't be off leash. I have tried so many times. Hey, leave him alone. Um, he has been quilled probably 10 times by porcupines because he just can't stop. Uh, he's just very crazy. Now granted, all of this stuff, uh, we're talking um, five years ago, the, the quilling and the, the bad stuff, right? Uh, we have really reined in on him and he just, he just doesn't get into trouble anymore because I am responsible with him now. But uh, when I was trying to, you know, um, train him off leash and do all these things that you could do with a normal dog, he just wasn't capable. He just can't do it. And he's extremely intelligent. Um, I, I got locked out of the house once and I was outside the slider door and he was sitting on the inside of the house and I literally was like, Kovu, unlock the door. Like, press this lock right here. And I'm pointing to the lock. It was a, like a, a lever system behind a handle. The motherfucker literally, are you okay? This poor idiot. Kane's actually my smartest dog, but um, <laughs> it's kind of a klutz. Um, I, I was able to point to the lock and tell Kovu through the door to unlock the door. And he did. He freaking took his paw and bloop, unlocked the door for us. So, um talk about intelligence level it is above and beyond most domestic dogs the scary thing about that is they can when they're that smart they can choose to not listen they know what you're saying 
they absolutely know what you're saying. Kovu knows many commands and many obedience things, but he chooses when he wants to do them, uh, including coming back when called. So um, because he is so kind of like wild, he picks and chooses when he wants to do things of where he wants to go and how he wants to do them. And for the average person that's not going to work long term, um, he is very uh, primitive. I mean, if you look at him, he looks very much like a wild dog. So he has, now that he has matured and grown up, like I said, you know, he's, he's, um, he's almost eight. He has a little bit of a pointy muzzle. He has erect ears. He has a thick coat um he's just he he has this beautiful kind of wild mask he's just a a a, a a primitive dog a primitive looking dog a lot of people think that he's some type of coyote mix or something but he's you know he's just um he's a mix of breeds that are not as domesticated as like your labrador retriever and your um you know little pocket lap dog so you know it reading these comments from people hundreds and hundreds of comments from people saying that they want a native american indian dog and these primitive breeds and alaskan huskies and all of these like more non-domesticated breeds just really think about if that is appropriate kane you're okay sweetheart um think about if that is appropriate because more likely than not, they will not be as obedient as a normal dog. Uh, they can get into a lot of trouble. They're going to be way smarter than you are and way faster than you are. And they need a lot more care and attention than a normal dog. Kovu, actually, on his DNA test, it said that he, he has a severe sensitive to anesthesia, which I noticed when he had to be put under for porcupines. He would... Sweetheart. Um... He, he would wake up and be really fucked up from it, like, like crying and spooked and like just, um, he has a really adverse reaction to anesthesia, so he can't even be treated like a normal dog. Are you tangled again, sweetie? So I, I just wanted to kind of address that, you know, primitive looking dogs look cool. I get a lot of comments. Stop. I get a lot of comments about Kovu. People want him. People want to buy him. People want to breed him, even though he's neutered. He's he's a gorgeous dog, but you cannot treat him like a normal dog. And notice how this domesticated one is kind of like, like Kane wants me to be reassuring him that everything's okay. He's very clingy. He he listens very well in terms of obedience. You're not gonna get that with this one. If I let him off the leash right now, he would be gone trying to kill a rabbit or chase a deer or something. Like, gone and not coming back unless he wanted to. So, just something to think about when you are thinking about getting a primitive breed or something that looks a little bit wild. Just really do your research because most of the time they're just not meant for the average, the average life, the average owner. And this dog will be way smarter and faster than you will ever be. <laughs> Unless you're very experienced with these types of dogs like Chad is. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to finish my hike with these boys. Um, I will bring my girls into a video at some point too. I will see you guys soon. Um, live your life. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next video. Adios from Kane and Kovu.